Hey boys and girls, we're at question 11 already. Question 11. Question 11 is this. What does God require in the 6th, 7th and 8th commandment? Let's start with the 6th commandment. The 6th commandment is, you shall not murder. Now what does that commandment require? Well it requires that we do not hurt, hate, or be hostile to our neighbors, but we are patient and peaceful pursuing our enemies with love. The sixth commandment is easy, right? I don't plan on killing anyone, and I'm sure you're not planning on killing anyone either. So we're off the hook, right? Next commandment, please. This one's not for me. Well, that's just not the case. This commandment requires a closer look. Jesus himself said that if anyone is angry with his brother, angry, or insults his brother, or says you fool, will be liable to the hell of fire. The hell of fire! This is big stuff. What's going on here? Well, remember, that human beings are different to animals. We were created in the image of God. Think about that. It's not just you that was created in God's image. It's your brother or your sister. The guy you bumped into at the shops. It's the man at the robot who is desperate and in need. It's the taxi driver that cut your dad off in traffic. It's Pastor Peter. Everyone was created in God's image. And the image of God is important and so everyone is valuable. All human life is valuable. So what does somebody who values human life look like? Well, for one, they don't murder. But they also demonstrate love. They serve others, they show kindness, they show compassion, they show mercy, they show patience. It's because their hearts understand the value of God's image and the value of human life. And their actions prove it. I want you to think about the last time you lost your ish. Think for one moment about what you are saying with your actions and what that might mean about what's in your heart. The seventh commandment is you shall not commit adultery. And the seventh commandment requires that we stay away from immorality, that we live purely and faithfully, whether in marriage or single life. And we avoid all impure actions, all looks and words and thoughts or desires or whatever might lead to them. Now, if you boys and girls are thinking, hmm, I don't even know what adultery is, then that's okay. This commandment is for adults because it's a commandment about marriage. When God created the world, you remember, he said that Everything was good. Well, it's not even a half a chapter later and God sees Adam is alone. He says that it's not good for Adam to be alone. See, Adam could not find a companion amongst all the animals and he was alone. So God made Eve and these two people were brought together. You see? God made marriage, and he cares about it very much. When two people get married, they make a covenant with each other. It's like a really, really, really serious promise. And the promise is not only between the man and the woman. The, man, the promise is between the man, the woman, and God. Now, adultery is when the man or the woman break those promises. And the seventh commandment is not just about not breaking promises. It's about 
faithfulness. If you want to follow the seventh commandment, then you need to respect marriage. You need to respect commitment. You need to understand the importance of covenants and promise keeping. You need to figure out what loyalty is and how to pursue a reputation of being loyal. And then one day if you do get married and you make those marriage promises, keep them. Keep them with all your heart. Keep them with all your mind. And most importantly, keep them with your actions. The eighth commandment. The eighth commandment is you shall not steal. What does the eighth commandment require? Well, it requires that we do not take without permission that which belongs to someone else, nor do we withhold any good from someone we might benefit. But have you ever thought about why we shouldn't steal? Why shouldn't we steal? Well, to start with, when you steal, you take away from someone and get more for yourself. Listen carefully to that. You take away from someone and you take it for yourself. When you steal, you get more for yourself and you take away from another person. You take something that God has blessed another person with and you take it for yourself. That sure does sound selfish. And selfish is the opposite of what Jesus showed us that we are meant to be. You see, Jesus gave to others. He gave healing. He gave time. He gave love. He gave his word. He gave compassion. He gave prayer. He gave food and he gave so much more. In fact, at the end, he gave everything when he gave his life. Stealing is taking. Stealing is selfish. It reveals a heart that serves itself. It's not a heart that serves others. It's not a heart that truly shows love. So this commandment is not only about stealing. Jesus didn't only not steal. Jesus gave. So think for a second about what God has given you. What could you give away that would bless someone else? Could be some of your time. Could be some of your energy. Those are gifts that God has given you and you could share them selflessly. Think about ways that you could show love by obeying the Eighth Commandment. Let's pray. Almighty God, today we've learned about love. We've learned about the importance of the image of God and the value of human life. We've learned about faithfulness and commitment. We've learned about selflessness. Help us to obey the sixth, seventh and eighth commandment by living out the love of Christ as we live out our lives for your glory.